Has the X54 from the iconic Malkinig earned a place on your counter? Let's dive in and look at the Malkinig X54. The Malkinig X54 is an all-around grinder that can swing from filter coffee to espresso, and it's also the first home grinder in a long line of absolutely legendary commercial grinders from the German manufacturer Malkinig. Now, I'm not kidding about this. If you walk into a specialty cafe near you, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna see a Malkinig grinder sitting on the counter. And for good reason, these grinders have become industry standard. They have incredible grind profiles across a wide range of brewing methods. With the X54, Malkinig has tried to bring that commercial pedigree into people's homes by reducing the size and price of the package without reducing a lot of quality. Now, have they done what they set out to do? Well, mostly they have, yes. There are a couple decisions here that I don't love, and we'll get into those in just a minute, but first, a quick disclaimer. Malkinig did send me this grinder, I didn't pay for it, and I think if you've been watching this channel for a little while, you'll know that I probably don't need very many more coffee grinders around. Now, they didn't ask for anything in return, they didn't ask for a YouTube review or any other type of content, they just said, hey, we'd love for you to try this grinder out and let us know what you think. Now, I've also gotten a lot of requests from you guys about this grinder, so so of course, I'm gonna to put together a review for it. Malkinig is seeing this video at the same time you are, and these are my full and honest thoughts on this grinder. Okay, let's dive in. The X54 retails for six to 650 US, and right out of the box, it gives a great first impression. It looks great, it feels great, it's nice and solid, and my wife even liked it, which is always a good sign too. It is a hopper style grinder, which means it's got a hopper that you fill up with beans up here, as opposed to a single dosing grinder that you weigh out each serving, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. It is a stepless grinder, which means this adjustment knob here, it's not gonna like clicky, click, click in between settings, it's infinite adjustability between settings, which is very nice. And it's got 54 millimeter uncoated steel burrs. More about those shortly. It's got four programmable settings right here on the dial. And right out of the gate, I found the grinder very intuitive, easy to use. I didn't even open the manual. I just started pushing buttons and I was able to very quickly figure out how it all worked, get some settings programmed and get grinding some coffee. So I always love when a grinder is super intuitive like that. Now, as far as coffee grinders go, it's very quiet being about just about on par with a niche zero decibel wise, but in a bit of a softer tone, which is very nice. And one thing I love about hopper style grinders is they're very easy and seamless and convenient to use. You just push a button or stick your portafilter in and it will spit out the exact right amount of coffee for you every time. It's very consistent dose to dose. And that's something that's very nice when you're just trying to make a coffee quickly. In fact, I think we shouldn't waste any time and I should actually just show you how it works. Now I've already got my time programmed in here, so I'm just gonna grab my portafilter out of the drawer. It also does come with these two little attachments, one for espresso and one for filter, so I'm gonna swap that out. The filter attachment is in here right now. Now all you need to do is put in the portafilter and it'll start grinding. There's a little button here. You can also start and stop it manually and you can even pull it out, redistribute your grinds in your basket and then put it back in for it to finish up with the right amount of dose. Let's just try that out. There we go. That's literally it. Now, with a single dosing grinder, you're gonna to need to weigh out your coffee every time, put it in the grinder, blow it out, whatever you need to do. With a grinder like this, you just stick your portafilter in just like that, and it's gonna give you the right amount every time. This is super convenient if you're like serving guests or doing a party and you're doing drink after drink. It's very nice and convenient. Now, I think the only logical thing that we have to do at this point is we have to make a coffee with this and see how it tastes. All right, so I'm drinking a Colombian coffee from Pilot Coffee Roasters today. This one is grown by a wonderful gentleman named Chalo Fernandez. He's got a farm called Las Palmas. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. That is really tasty. Okay, that, that is a wonderful shot, and honestly, I wouldn't expect a lot less from a company like Malkinig. One of the things I love about this grinder is it's just, it's very friendly and flattering to a lot of different coffees. I find some grinders can be really difficult to dial in and this one, it just seems to have like a very friendly, approachable profile. So good in fact, I think I'm just gonna down this. Mm. 
tasty. So we got a lot of pros with this grinder. Obviously you have that legendary Malkinig name that you get to bring into your own house. It looks good on the counter. It's a very solid overall package. It's pretty quick. I find it's between 10 to 11 seconds for an 18 gram shot of espresso. And it doesn't just do good on espresso, it makes for crisp and clear cups on filter as well. The dosing cups are very nice. That's something that I find is very often overlooked with grinders is the dosing cup. Everything about this grinder just feels very cohesive, like it's well put together, approachable, usable, and intuitive. And I know I already mentioned this, but this grinder is really quiet. Like I've used some grinders and they just like have this squealing, high pitched, high RPM sound. And this is about a thousand RPM just over, but even compared to the niche, which is a pretty quiet grinder, like I said, it's about the same volume, but it's got a much softer pitch. And that is really nice when you're a parent and you're not gonna worry about using this grinder in the morning if you got a bunch of kids. Some other grinders have a super narrow sweet spot for trying to dial an espresso, like it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, and then, oh, it's good, and then, oh, it's bad, it's bad. I found this one was very easy to dial in coffee, and even if I didn't get it right on, it would still produce a favorable cup, and I just found it very flattering to a wide variety of coffees, which is nice if you're busy and you just want good coffee on the regular. Now, a big reason for that performance is the experience that Malkinig brings to the table from its commercial line, and particularly around coffee grinder burrs, the actual things that cut the coffee inside the grinder. Now these burrs are 54 millimeter uncoated steel made in Germany and they taste great, but there's a trend right now in the world of coffee grinder burrs towards doing these coated burrs, which means they're coated in another metal, very often titanium, and that is supposed to increase the longevity and consistency of Burrs. Now, I had an opportunity to ask Malkinig why they made the choice they did, and I'm not a metallurgist or a scientist, so if you are and you want to chime in on this, I would love to hear from you in the comments, but the answer that they gave was very interesting. Anytime you have a metal coating on top of another metal or substrate, as it's called, any kind of microscopic flex on the metal will cause the coating to kind of crack. And you can find pictures of this if you look online of the coating wearing off of these burrs over extended life use. Now, once you realize that, you have to ask yourself, where does that coating go after it wears off? Now again, I'm not a scientist, but needless to say, Malkinig feels very good about their choice to do an uncoated burr. And I have to say the result is very good. So we got a lot of good things going on with this grinder. Easy to use, great burrs, great workflow. What are some negatives that you may want to consider as you weigh if this is the grinder for you? Well, it is a hopper style grinder. And while that brings some advantages like convenience, it also brings some disadvantages. If you ever want to change the coffee, like, hey, I'm feeling like a decaf today. You can't just switch and have a decaf. You got to take this thing off and then put another one on and purge whatever coffee is left inside. Then you can have a decaf. Also, when you're going from, say, a very fine espresso setting to a coarse filter setting, you need to run the grinder for a little bit to get those leftover grounds out of the grinder or else you're gonna have those very fine particles in your filter coffee, which isn't gonna taste the greatest. And then when you decide to go back to espresso, there's gonna be coffee grounds stuck in there. So you have to tighten the burrs, bring them closer together while the grinder is running, which is gonna create more waste. So on the whole, it can be a little bit of a more wasteful setup, which is the main trade-off that you get for that convenience. Also, because it's not a single dosing grinder, it's not really designed as a low retention grinder, which makes a lot of sense because there's always constantly coffee being fed into it. So of course there's gonna be coffee left inside too. But all of that is gonna be true with any hopper style grinder and there are advantages that trade off some of those negatives. So where are some disadvantages that are gonna be specific to this grinder in particular? Well, there are a couple things that I'm not really sure if they are the best choices by Malkinig. You have these swappable attachments, which are really nice, but sometimes with the espresso attachment in, I just want to shove the dosing cup in there and get a dose out at a filter setting, which you can do, but it doesn't really fit in here. 
here the greatest. It would be really nice if they either redesigned their dosing cup or provided a way that it just kind of fit together a little bit more nicely. It's roughly the right size, so I don't really understand why they have made that choice. Also, this adjustment knob on the side, there's reasons why Malkinig has designed it this way, but what I found with it, it, it doesn't really feel cheap, but when you're trying to make a very fine adjustment, what can happen is, you know, you're trying to adjust it just a tiny little bit, and then you give enough force, and all of a sudden it gives, and it moves a little bit more than you thought, and then you need to kind of dial it back to where you actually needed to. So I found when you're making very fine adjustments, this is mostly for espresso, it can be a little tricky from time to time. It's also a lot more difficult to clean than a lot of other grinders and involved of a process. You have to use several tools, take out a bunch of screws, whereas some other grinders just kind of unscrew them and it pops apart and you can kind of clean it out. Now, Malkinig recommends you use uh, cleaning tabs. I like to just get in there and clean it all out with a brush, personally. And again, it's a bit of a trade-off. They want this grinder to last a long time, so they've really designed it to be held together very well, but that makes it harder to get into it when you want to clean it. It's also a little bit of a tall grinder, so if you have like upper cabinets, slipping it underneath and being able to open this to refill can be a little tricky. This is the shorter of the two hoppers. Thankfully, Malkinig released a shorter hopper versus the original. The original is about 16 and a half inches tall, and this one is about 15 inches tall. So that's something where you're just gonna to wanna to take some measurements of your kitchen and make sure it's gonna fit where you want it to. And just be aware if you have cabinets that like come down to here, it's gonna be hard to refill the beans when you need to do that. One other thing that I noticed is that out of the box, the way the grinder was calibrated was a little bit too coarse for a great espresso. So I had to go through and re-zero my grinder. So if it seems that way for you, you might not be crazy. Now I also found, and this wasn't true for everybody who I asked, but I did also find, depending on the coffee that I was using, that this grinder created a little bit of static, which can make for a little bit of a mess. And that's something that is never fun to deal with when you are paying for an expensive grinder. But unfortunately, it's also something that can be relatively common amongst coffee grinders. Now overall though, considering the quality of coffee you get out, how intuitive the grinder is to use, the workflow and its counter appeal and the Malkinig name and pedigree, those cons are not really a huge list and a lot of them you're gonna get with any hopper style grinder. Now that begs the question, can you convert this grinder into a single dosing grinder and get rid of a bunch of those cons that have to do with it having a hopper? And the answer is, yes you can. There are several aftermarket components that you can get to convert this grinder into more of a single dosing workflow where you're weighing out each coffee and then putting it through and blowing it out. And I'm gonna link to my favorite one here in the comments. And if you're the type of person who wants that single dosing workflow, you're switching coffees all the time, it works really well and it brings all of the advantages of the Malkinig name workflow burrs to the single dosing package. Now, is doing that a little bit less convenient than a hopper style grinder where you can just walk up to it and start using it? Sure, but there are other advantages to using a single dosing setup, like you can switch coffees whenever you want. Overall, the X54 presents a pretty compelling package, and I got a lot of coffee friends, and for a lot of them, this is their top recommendation for this price point. I have friends who have coffee trailers and pop-ups, and even though this is a home grinder, this is what they use. And I have other friends who have grinders that are many times the X54's price who have got their hands on one and they're like, I'm not gonna sell it. I like using it too much. And for me too, I don't have any problem standing behind this grinder and recommending it. It's usable, it's fantastic, it's intuitive, and the coffee tastes great. What more are you gonna ask for? Now, I'd love to hear what you think of the X54. Has Malkinig hit the mark with this grinder or have they missed it in your opinion? Should they have done a purpose-built single dosing grinder instead or maybe is that something they should consider in the future? What do you think of the coated versus uncoated burrs conversation? That one is kinda interesting for me. I wanna hear what you think of this grinder and if you have a video that you wanna see from me, make sure to let me know in the comments as well. Until next time, cheers.